There's going to be some issues here today. Somebody's going to have to take a little moment. My name's Quentin, I'm uh, from Ohio and guide up in Alaska during the summertime and then down here at uh, Martin Pescador during, in the winter. So we started out this morning, uh, he's quite the streamer guy, he kind of does the same thing I do, ran me through some great water, I can't seem to cast without hitting a tree, it's been really nice getting my flies for me. He knows how I like that. Do not go get that fly. I can motor you up there. No, you can't. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> but we had some activity, mostly just little rainbows. We're so we've went through all the color changes as usual. Uh, it's got a nice cloud. Everything's kind of moved in on us now. It's kind of stable. It's kind of was going light and dark and light and dark, and it's kind of set in a little bit. Pretty nice. So we're gonna we motored. How far we go? Mile two? Yeah, it's a mile and a half. Mile and a half. Yeah. Mile and a half down. We fished the shade bank. Now it's all shade, so it doesn't matter. We're, so we're going to move, like I said, had one kind of fun little rainbow that seemed to find himself in the boat. <laughs> it was pretty fun. But I uh, haven't seen any. We got one brown little one, but it's mostly little rainbow, so we're still, we're still hunting it up. It's kind of like the matchy sky colors, but when I'm... What do you mean by that? It's graying up on us, so... So you'd throw something a little bit I'm, more. I'd like to follow that, maybe dark. This one's kind of in between, right? So I can... Right. You've got that gray flash on there, but also mm -hmm. like the green contrast and darker stuff. But I would rather have like a, a gray boogie or yeah. a white, and maybe a dirty white one or, I don't know, just kind of follow it. But it seems that everybody's responding to the same color. But I have a thing about when you get yellow light yeah yellow light i go to tan i don't give a f if i just caught 50 fish on something sorry but you oh. think that tan matches that right? i i yeah it matches that, that yellow thing. is almost too bright at that point then yep but so now so it just busted out right there this fly is particularly good with sun right and i do very poorly with it when it's not sunny i mean so I, and, but it, you know, it looked like it was going to split, but if it looked like that was going to set on us, I would have taken that fly off the second that cloud came over. I don't like being on the fronts of those either. Yeah. Last time I came down this couple hundred yards, they were sitting on the fronts, but. See them little... on the cushion every once in a while. Yeah. On the South Fork, you see that a lot. Sorry. It's uh, really common over there. I mean, one of the funnest things in the world is fish the cell fork with a PMD. Yeah. When the PMDs come on, and particularly that hatch. Look at that one. Oh, gotcha. there he is. That tiny. Oh, get out of there. Get out of there. Is that thing in the boat? <laughs> That's how you land them. <laughs> in the boat. <laughs> That's the first one that looked like he should eat it. It's the first one I've let eat. Since the last time you had one jump in the boat? I've only had that a couple times. <laughs> Between this fly and a peanut envy, when things aren't happening and they don't eat on these two, right. I got real issues with the confidence thing. Yeah. That's what they say, low numbers days. Don't let your confidence go away. Happen. This is the day it happens. That's Johnny's mantra. Could be the greatest day of our life. Johnny, we've been out here for 13 hours, haven't had to eat, and it's five below zero. Could be the greatest day of our life. <laughs> I always, not always, usually start with a white boogeyman so I can see it and just get used to if I'm going to be hitting trees all day or if I'm going to actually be able to cast. <laughs> and then I can watch the fly to see if I like how I'm working the rod. Now, do you see and, any difference when when it's shady like this and that fly comes into that light or it, 
Uh, it can be pretty, I don't know if it, you remember it more because it's so spectacular. Right. Like it flashes and all of a sudden something's on it. Yeah. But it probably came from the dark anyway. Right on. But I particularly, and this highlight, this is when I'm going to go to this fly, any fly like this. And, it, and flies with a lot of copper in them too. I like mm -hmm. that, and that's super. But I went through on up there, that that day was, and you got a lot of juvenile whitefish in the river then too for us, and that's when, but you guys don't, I don't know what you have for bait fish in this. Uh, we have the, those pouille, which are mm -hmm. like worms, yep. eels, little fish, and yep. then, uh, just little rainbows, pretty much. This there's another, good... there's another like kind of whitefish chub sort of deal, but there's not a whole lot of them. It's not like prevalent. Well, this was made to be a juvenile whitefish originally. That's when I, what my thought process was. And because our rivers are just jacked full of those things, man. And so, but anyway, any rate, up there, I, you know, I go start white, take it off, put black, get one. And sun kind of comes out quick. And I uh, put it on and immediately, I mean, just a jack me. I mean, yeah. just, I mean, you, it was, I saw it coming. It was wide open running. Get off of that. And I, it's like, well, it, and it was so aggressive that I thought, oh, shit, maybe it's a fluke, right? Maybe I'll never catch another fish on this thing in my life. But I, thought, I just thought I had like a suicide fish, right? And it didn't stop for five days, I think I was there. So many things have to come together for a real one. A, it's got to want to be willing, obviously. It's got to sit there. I mean... They're no smarter than the rest of them. They just got more night rules, you know. They they don't do that day thing very often. And get off that. Get off of that. Yeah. Little baby. I'm not. I'm not setting the hook. I'm trying to get it away from you. <laughs> uh, and so it would suck to have. You know, people say, "Why'd you do it? Just catch it." You catch. The Fish and it might be one right underneath it. It's a giant brown, mm -hmm. and that rainbow coming out and going crazy that's a trigger thing for browns. It's like if you're gonna get one to do something, I have a very bad feeling that I just got hit hazed. right there. Yeah, no, but it was like came underneath my fly while it was hanging there. Yeah, I think I just corner my eye, so but that that can that is a huge trigger for those big fish. Is, I mean, they, they so, T-bone the rainbow on your line yeah, all the time, yeah. right? And I've had it happen on this bank a lot, too, but what you're doing is you're just kind of teasing them up almost. No, not on purpose, yeah. but I see it. I try to get it away from yeah. them so I don't lose. You only get, like, if this whole week, we'll probably get one shot at a fish, mm -hmm. if we're lucky, mm -hmm. right? A real one, mm -hmm. if we're lucky. I'm telling you, a 30-pound brown can be, you can't see it. It is, they are, oh, that oh, oh yeah. Off of that. <laughs> I tried to get him to go away. That thing almost looked like it was a game fish. All right. It's a brown trout. That's hey. all we care about. Sorry, little buddy. I tried to get it away from you. Plop shot. I think I've had more of those today than I should have in a year. Feels great. I got no excuse, dude. There is nothing here. I have nothing. I'm not even worried about it anymore. It's like I think it's payback. Maybe I maybe I got another concussion. We're gonna go with that one. Uh, you know, this for a while when this first came out. This is my God. I just killed on this thing. And you know what? The color the color I never caught fish on was white, and Jeremy just annihilated on that white thing. I had a white one ready to go, but I thought, oh, oh yeah. you bastard. He's still down there. There he is. He's Put it back in looking. there. He's Come still on. looking. Come back to it. The brownie. Acting like he's supposed to. Yep. Right where he should have been, too. 
There. Ooh. Mm. I couldn't tell, but boy, did I just get faked out. I saw a shadow underneath there. Yeah. It seemed like it was moving, but it actually was the tree. I didn't say anything because my body said that's a 30. Did you see the video yesterday, Quentin, of uh, I did not. I need to see that, though. Breaking the rod. The shark comes up. He's sharking me. I flip it backwards. He eats it. Stash out! Ah! Rod just exploded. One thing you got to be careful of, Braden's incredibly guilty of this. If you see a fish, you suddenly change your cadence of your flies. Yeah. They were eating slow, and if you see one come and get it. Yeah, and you start burning it back. He said it to me yesterday. You see what I did? You see what I did? Maybe I can hit the open space. Maybe we should go to the middle and let me flow on one side so I can't hit a tree. <laughs> God damn. It's probably just a trout. Oh, oh he got. Oh, how did he All come right. on? <laughs> right where he should have been, too. He, he was right still there. on it. I don't see him, do you? He might not have got stuck. Huh, that was weird. <laughs> I didn't kind of got a trout set on him, though. There he is. Oh, are you Put kidding me? Decent one. I mean, what's your favorite movie? Favorite movie? Yeah. Probably Inglorious Bastards. That's a good one. Tarantino film. What about you, Kelly? Expendables one, two, three, or four. What's that? Expendables one, two, three, or four. <laughs> Just love it. I love this. Uh, Oh my God, a checkerboard's a checkerboard. If I can get gaps between stuff like that, I just absolutely, I mean, I'd prefer it to be more water cressy type, deeper right. weed, but uh, so they could actually sit behind or around it. They're particularly ambushy in that kind of water. They just, they don't like shit going over their heads that close. Ha! Ah, that was a good head. You see it? I don't know what's going on. He kind of came straight up and yeah. gobbled it. Looked like he did. I didn't feel a thing. I also was standing back here one day and I hit a tree yeah. by myself. Holy shit. Was a <laughs> I wasn't back here. I was in the yeah. I was in the middle of my boat. It launched me. Oh, these G3s do not give you much. I don't like water that comes up. I have very low confidence right there. And that water right there that comes up like this. Right. Nah. Not for me. I don't know. Somebody might figure it out. I can't. Yeah, Kelly, I was meaning to ask you, what, what's your opinion on water like this? Like a big bar, or like not much wood or whatever. Oh, I don't, I'm just as, uh, shelves I think are more important than anything. Yeah. I don't think wood's that, uh, wood just happens to be, if you think about where it is. It just happens to be there. The hydrology is that it's not pushy where we're fishing it. Every one of those big fish came out of soft water, right? Mm -hmm. Through less than three foot deep, they're hanging there. Uh, more food source, you know, generally speaking, that would be a huge portion of it. You have no food source out here. So fish on this edge, you know, and again, when you, it's amazing when you go and you get in those holes and you dive them and you see, you go from three foot to five feet, how sterile that is, right. like in a rich environment like Michigan, right? right? Which is just bug laden and it's, there is nothing there. And there's nothing in the world that lives in sand Nothing that a fish is going to eat. Maybe these eel things. I don't know. Uh, I, I, the, the, the most important thing to me is parallel color change. Yeah. And if it and it's just a, it's just the depth, right? So it goes like this and drops off. I mean, I could see every fish in the river hang on this thing right here. Yeah. Behind me, I would guess that there's it'd be pretty hard to get one. I would think there's just no reason, you know. Right. You're. There's no food source. You're not a. Yeah, there's just no no reason. 
and they aren't going to stay there forever. They have to go, fish move incredible distances to find their food. Mm -hmm. I mean, on the Asaba, one fish was in three different river systems in four weeks. That's 60 miles of movement. And, and they're nocturnal, right? So they go, they do that at night. They're not day feeders, but if they can get it, I mean, if they're hungry, they're gonna eat anything. I mean, they gotta, but there's no food source in the deep stuff. There's no, they're not afraid of anything. I mean, the biggest fish you see, you see them out here all the time, right? Right. They're not afraid of anything. That would be, if a fish could, had cognitive reasoning and could database this, we could never catch one. <laughs> <laughs> they, they don't have a brain. Oh, they got you got to remind yourself they're fish sometimes. Yeah, you know? well, yeah, people say, they got a brain the size of a pea. If they had a brain the size of a pea, we'd never catch one. <laughs> a fraction of a grain of salt. People are always saying how they, the bird, they're afraid of the birds of prey and all. I live, my front window is about from my of the fly, where that fly hit. Yeah. That's where my living room is. And I sit and watch those ospreys come in and boom and take a fish right there in front of me. And the other guy goes, <laughs> I mean, hey, more room for me. They just slide over, right? I almost killed Johnny and I in my sled. I yeah. didn't open my, uh, I still don't, I think. What do you run on the back, a jet or a prop? Yeah. 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 I want to take it off. I don't like jets. I don't, I much prefer a prop. I ran props most of my life. But we uh, we were going downstream. We didn't have my oars out. Yeah. Still had them locked. Yeah. Come around the sweeper. River's about this size. And there's a tree worse than this with all of it in and it's fresh in. You never take off without your oars ready, right? Yeah. And I uh, airlocked on my tank. I didn't open my vent. Came around that corner and we can't get it. We went under that tree and somehow Johnny has this branch and we actually were taking water which theoretically if you take water you've broke vacuum on your boat and right. you're gonna flip right and the, he's got a branch that's that big around he broke it and it's green tree this I mean it's not possible what he did he broke that thing and he's a big kid but I don't give a shit. that's that's supernatural and the boat and we got pushed out from underneath it and lived total luck came back up oars are out got above it we look at the tree and we ran out of gas and we almost did it again twice in a row look at these fish right now they're little ones but they looked like they were going after it when we were coming down look at all these rainbows in here a million of them There oh, he is. Oh, a little rainbow. <laughs> he ain't falling off. Why do those browns fall off and he won't? And he's on the back hook, which never happens. They're slashing right now. Yep. They're eating those. I think that was two fish, actually. They're eating those worms, those puya. Yeah. We can. We can. What? When they're slashing like that. They're eating this dungeon too. <laughs> like crazy. They're definitely hunting something up. So the reason we have articulated flies, well, when, when we started doing it originally, wasn't to make the flies bigger because we were already throwing these carry Stevens trolling hooks to where the hook was as long as this fly is, right? Uh -huh. But we kept seeing, particularly when we'd run these brighter, like a white or a tan woolly sculpin, and we would see the fish eat the head of that thing. They always eat the head. They're just, they, they target the head always because they got to kill it. They can't, it's, it's, so, it's really simple stuff because, but we just don't think about it. A trout has to eat it to get, it's got most of the things that they kill have dorsal fins and spiny dorsals. Even a trout that has, it's got, obviously they all, they all have fins the same, but 
you know, some have their number one food source is a sculpin, and it's got a spiny dorsal, right? So you aren't going to eat a spiny dorsal backwards. And the other thing people forget is that trout do not have a hand to push the, the thing into their mouth, right? And so they have to either get, a, get it head first on the kill, and even then, most of the time, the trout has to let it go and go back and catch it on the, they, let, they, they swim up, let the thing go, and then they turn around and swim downstream and catch it so they can eat it head first. Think about how a trout would put a, if he's got something in his mouth sideways, like you see him T-bone it all, mm -hmm. you know, all the time. How could he possibly get that into his mouth? He doesn't got any way to, he's got to let it go. And so I think, you know, you'll get these days like, I mean, we've had way too many fish. I mean, not a ton, but I mean, especially those two bigger browns, they're like chowing it, right? right. And, you, and it's like, blah, 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 and you, you and see their mouth open and they're like, it's and like one, like, two, bam, three, you know? Right? Yeah. And it's like, and so you know, but I was fishing with, I think it was Chris and I, Chris, I don't know, I think it was, I can't remember, might have been Russ. And we had a chartreuse woolly sculpin and get off of that. And then. It was me fishing, so I don't, it, I don't, maybe it was, I don't know, but I was fishing. So the fly's as long as the one I've got right now on, right? Mm -hmm. Probably six inches, five and a half, six inches, I don't know. And I mean, the hook's four and a half inches. And so it comes up in a flat, just about like we are right now. Just a, almost identical water that we're fishing over right now. And this fish comes up and it's a big one, and I mean, He's in that, he might not have been 28, but he was all 26 or seven. And he eats it in this really skinny water. And I see him, you know, just clobbers. He does a spin eat. And I see the fly hanging out of his mouth. And I go, and it's right there. And I'm like, <laughs> and the hook goes like this. Doesn't do anything. Turns his head. He's got it right by, you can see this much of the fly sticking out of his face forward. Right. And here's the hook. And that's there, and I had three strip sets, hard as I could, just pawing that thing. Yeah. Nothing, he went back like this, did three times, and he turns, goes, let's go, and the, whew, here comes my fly. I mean, you couldn't set the hook harder if you tried. And it was about identical to this. I mean, it was this much water, you know, I'm straight across from it, so I'm getting this perfect, and I didn't really move the fly in his mouth. Look at a cigar sticking out of his face. And so we started articulating only not to make the fly bigger, but to get the hook in the front, because we realized they were eating the head of that thing. It's so rare to get, when you get one in the back hook, usually a piss ant, you know, a little 12, 14 inch fish. Nipping at it or something. Or you get, or they bite it and it, you set the hook and it goes through and you get that, get them with the back hook. This would be a money morning shot for big fish to move up on these flats yeah. to kill little guys. They go to, they go to where the juvenile fish live. They don't just make these random, they know where the juvies live. It's always marginal water, like this. There's another aspect of that too, that it Ooh. reduces the impact zone where you got a shorter window to attack. Yeah. So you don't So they find gotta them. act quicker. Yeah, and so if you're in six feet of water and you're chasing something, it gets to go, you know, three feet in each direction. If you change that to 18 inches, life gets a little bit more sure for catching the thing. Well, it appears we forgot to shoot the outro for this show. Unfortunately, I missed more fish than I should have, but it was still great. Um, hope you liked it. It's pretty scenic, pretty, pretty unbelievable place to be, but it was a great time and 
Hope you liked it and I hope it helps you out.